Well, it wasn't just the banksters at the top of the banking system that profited from massive fraud with TARP and other bailouts. We find out that the corruption was actually systemic. Although it was being directed by those at the top, we find out that even employees at lower levels were profiting from fraudulent behavior. InfoWars reports today bonuses were given to Bank of America employees for home floor closures. Bank of America employees in the mortgage servicing unit systematically lied to homeowners, fraudulently denied loan modifications, and paid staff bonuses for foreclosing on people's homes. Now, this is part of the Home Affordable Mod Modification Program, HAMPF which was supposed to lower homeowners' monthly payments so they could afford their payments and sustain their home for the long term. Borrowers were supposed to make three trial payments before loan modification became permanent. Instead, the borrowers were left making trial payments for up to one year and then were rejected for permanent modification. Homeowners were left owing the difference between the trial modification and the original payment. Bank of America employees were told to lie to customers telling them their files were incomplete or missing when they weren't. The delay and rejection programs were methodically carried out in the overall direction of Patrick Carey, a vice president of Bank of America, who oversaw the entire Eastern region's loan modification process. This is very similar to what we reported on just a week or two ago about the Irish banksters doing a rope-a-dope on the Irish government and taxpayers telling them that it was a small amount of money that they needed for a bailout. I think they just, uh, as he said, he pulled a figure out of his arse, is what he put it, of $7 billion. He just made that figure up. And they were caught talking to each other on the phone with some recordings, laughing about how they just made this figure up, knowing that it was much higher. It turned out it was more along the lines of 30 billion pounds, not 7 billion pounds. And it nearly bankrupted the Irish government certainly put a tremendous burden on the taxpayers. Well, this is essentially the same thing done to individual homeowners. If you remember, the original TARP program was set up to help people with their mortgage payments. Uh, congressmen were told and senators were told by the Treasury Department and by other bankers that they were going to have martial law if they didn't have a TARP program. But rather than relieve anybody of the mortgage that uh, they could have paid off 75% of all the mortgages. Instead, the bankers kept all the mortgages, paid themselves large bonuses, and are using things like the HAMP program to trick people. Rather than relieve people of their mortgage obligations or rather than helping them, the bankers were actually tricking them into getting farther in debt, getting behind in their payments, so they could then take the homes in foreclosure. Now, we have a video here from uh, Germany that is actually a, uh, it was descriptive of what had been going on in the United States, but it's actually also prophetic about some news that came out today. Take a look at this. This is an individual who sets up a bunch of equipment in his van, and he's actually calls himself a light artist, and he projects this uh, image here of Kim.com, and above him it says United Stasi of America. And it's pointing out that the United States government is acting exactly like the Stasi. Now, he projected this on the U.S. Embassy in Berlin. They know exactly what the Stasi is about in Berlin. The difference is, is that uh, between the Stasi and what we've got today is, of course, at the time, the Stasi reportedly had over half of the population reporting on each other. And, of course, that's what it looks like we're going to have here as Obama is ordering government workers to spy on one another. An InfoWars story says this is where the bureaucratic snake starts to eat itself. Basically, it works like this. Watch your coworkers, and if they're acting the slightest bit strange, one had better report them or face disciplinary or even legal action. Now, here's the actual memo from DeFuer, Obama and his uh, minions here. They said, this went out to federal employees. Federal employees and contractors are asked to pay particular attention to the lifestyles attitudes and behaviors like financial troubles, odd working hours, or unexplained travel of their co-workers as a way to protect whether, predict whether they might do harm to the United States. Managers of special insider threat offices will have regular, timely, and if possible, electronic access to employees' personnel, payroll, disciplinary, and personal contact files, as well as records of their use of classified and unclassified computer networks, polygraph results, 
travel reports, and financial disclosure forms. Isn't that amazing? Truly is an Orwellian state. Unlike the Stasi, though, the Stasi, as I said, reportedly had more than half of the people as informants, but they didn't have a way to mine the data. They collected all this information, but it really wasn't that useful to them because they couldn't process it. That's not what we have today in our modern technocracy. They have the ability to process and store everything, and they have the ability to data mine and correlate that information, which makes our Fed coats, our Stasi, our United Stasi of America, far more dangerous than any tyranny that has ever been in the, in the history of the world. The entire framework has been set. They have created for themselves a supposedly legal framework that has been set up by secret courts where we have no arguments on the other side. We can't see what those decisions are, but in their imagination, they believe that they have modified the Constitution and our fundamental rights and liberties, which themselves transcend the Constitution. They're not granted by the Constitution, they are recognized by the Constitution. But our government believes that they have fundamentally transformed the legal framework, they have the technological framework in position, and what we're looking at is a high-tech dictatorship potential that is unlike anything the world has ever seen in history. Now, look at how they divide and conquer people with manufactured dissent. This uh, article from Pajama Media says, newly released documents detail the Department of Justice's role in organizing a Trayvon Martin protests. This was Judi Judicial Watch filed a Freedom of Information Act request with the Department of Justice back in April. And what they learned was a very little known Department of Justice unit called the Community Relations Service. Sounds a lot like community organizers, doesn't it? Or community agitators. And what they found is that these, this community relations service was being funded and actually deployed was the term that they used. And uh, in March 25th, they have a timeline here from these FOIA re request documents. They were actually deployed to Sanford, Florida back in March. And they were being funded uh, from various amounts from uh, five or $600 to about $1,200 each event. They were being deployed to basically foment uh, conflict between different people, different groups. What we have here is, an, as they've said, never let a crisis go to waste. This is something that was just too good for our government to pass up because here they have an opportunity to pit one racial group against another, to put it in those terms, which is really what it's taken on, as well as attacking the Second Amendment all at once. So our federal government couldn't, uh, couldn't pass up that opportunity, so they create an organization, a little unit, to go down and to do things like uh, providing support for protest deployment. Uh, they provide technical assistance to the city of Sanford, event organizers and law enforcement agencies for the march and for a rally on March 31st. They provide technical assistance and conciliation, on-site mediation during demonstrations. This is absolutely amazing. They provide technical assistance for preparation of possible marches and rallies related to fatal shooting of a 17-year-old African-American male. And they mentioned that several times in here, that it's about an African-American male, because that's a big part of it, doing a race war, trying to set up conflict, divide and conquer, separating people into competing groups, left and right, black and white. But what's the biggest lie, the biggest lie that our federal government tells us? Well, they want us to believe that there's a trade-off between liberty and security, that there's some zero-sum game. And certainly, uh, we can trade our liberty thinking that we're going to get security, but we don't. And as we see that trade-off increasingly being put out there by the federal government, we start to believe that they're opposites of each other, that you can't be secure if you don't have liberty, and that if you're going to be secure, you, you, can't, you have to give it up. But the real opposite of liberty is not security. The real opposite of liberty is slavery, because when you give up all of your liberties, you're going to be a slave. And slaves never have any security. Some people are starting to understand this. In an InfoWars article, poll shows massive swing in public view of terror and liberty trade-off. It says, a new scientific poll out this week finds that former NSA leaker Ed Snowden is viewed by the majority of Americans in a positive light as a whistleblower and not as a traitor, as the mainstream media and government officials would like to have it. 
When given two options, 55% of poll respondents said they believed him to be a whistleblower, while only 34% saw him as a traitor. But here's the more interesting aspect, I believe, of this article. Perhaps a more telling revelation from the poll is the fact that by a 45 to 40 percent margin, voters now believe that the government goes too far in restricting civil liberties in the name of anti-terrorism efforts. And if you saw that graph that we were showing, that's a dramatic turnaround. The blue is people who believe that uh, liberty is more important. And you can see they were vastly outnumbered by the people in red earlier on who believe that security should predominate in that kind of a trade-off. Again, it's a false trade-off. It's a false deal. You will never get security from liberty. And fortunately now in this latest poll, we see that over half of the people realize that they're not getting any more security for the freedoms that they've lost. Hopefully we're going to see a change in that. Well, that's it for our tonight's news. Uh, we'd like to tell you about a new book that we're just starting to carry. It's called Breakthrough. And it's about uh, the guerrilla war that is being conducted by James O'Keefe and his organization. And it's how they're, uh, it's, it's a great book here. We just started carrying it at InfoWarsStore.com. It's their guerrilla war to expose fraud and to save the democracy as a subtitle on it. And if you want to help expose fraud and save our democracy, you can support us here at InfoWars at PrisonPlanet.tv. Get a subscription for yourself and 10 other people to use simultaneously. That helps to support the operation and it helps to spread the news. Are we choosing our own paths, our own destiny, or has it been pre-selected for us? C.S. Lewis said, when training beats education, civilization dies. We need to always be cognizant of, as a free society, that information can be used as a weapon. Barrier to discovery is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. We are seen as nothing but biological androids. To gain control of education in America, not for a philanthropic purpose, but to change the thinking of the American people. From the time we're very young, we're taught to, you know, worship authority basically because that's our key to survival as young children. Discover the history, the present, and the future of mind control. From compulsory state education to the Hollywood media brainwashing machine, we are kept in perpetual bondage to the ideas that shape our actions. And the CIA scientists could actually film people who had been surreptitiously dosed with LSD. There's a brain entrainment process that takes place. That gives the government free reign to create whatever story or narrative it wants to create. Whatever the public face of something is, whatever they're talking about publicly, there's something else over here they're probably not looking at. How to engineer the opinion of the American people so that they would fully endorse, not only endorse, but demand a war. When you watch mainline establishment television, you are putting yourself in front of the barrel of a gun. Discover the history, the present, and the future of mind control, psychological warfare, brainwashing. Are we controlled and manipulated? You bet. That's mind control par excellence. Find out how deep the rabbit hole really goes with this new groundbreaking documentary film, State of Mind. Available exclusively at InfoWars.com.